So thank you very much for being here in this last uh, lecture of our, of our course. Um, let me remind you uh, that in the, in the previous lecture, we saw the comparison isomorphisms. We saw C the RAM or CADR, which uh, relates, relates the, the RAM cohomology. So as usual, we take a, a X a proper and smooth variety over K. K is a, a piadic field. And uh, this uh, theorem um, relates the, the, the RAM cohomology of X with the tag cohomology, right? Via the period ring that we define in the beginning of our course which is B the RAM. And this isomorphism is functorial and respects filtrations and Galois actions. So it's a very good uh, result. And then we have uh, the crystalline version uh, for X uh, proper and smooth variety with good reduction. Remember, uh, good reduction, it means that it has a, a proper and smooth model that, that I denote like this over the ring of integers of K. Um, and in that case, we have a, um, a canonical and functorial isomorphism that relates the crystalline cohomology of the special fiber with the etal cohomology of X. So just uh, to recall you that, uh, to, yeah, to remind you that uh, the special fiber, the special fiber is a, is a variety in characteristic P. So it's, it's a variety over a small K. Um, a small K is the residue field. So, so crystalline cohomology uh, works uh, very well in the proper and smooth case, right? Uh, it's gonna be a W module where W is the, the ring of bit vectors of the residue field. In this case, it's a finite field. Mm. So yeah, mm, we have this this um, this isomorphism. In this case, we have an extra structure, which is Frobenius, right? Uh, Frobenius was uh, the thing that we didn't have in B the RAM. We do have it in B crease. And so this isomorphism respects um, also Frobenius. So yeah, so we have this, we had this, uh, these comparison isomorphisms. Mm. And yesterday, I, in the last part of the lecture, I, I asked uh, this question, can we extend the theorem, the preceding theorem to the semi-stable reduction case? What I mean by that uh, is that X has a semi-stable model, um, which is uh, that uh, that model is locally a tal over this, uh, this affine scheme. Mm. So the the comment uh, yesterday, uh, um, I apologize if it was a little messy in the end. Um, I will try to to be more precise today with with uh, those comments, um, just to start uh, this this lecture. Mm. So so the thing is that since we are not in the proper smooth case for the for the um, special fiber, mm, crystalline cohomology is not uh, a good choice. And what I mentioned yesterday is that we need log crystalline cohomology for this case. And so I will try to, to state uh, uh, some, some basic facts about, the, about this. So let me start with the definition of of um, a log structure. So let me let me remind you something that I said yesterday. Mm. Just give me a second. So we have the semi-stable model. Let me write like this. With this, I mean the spec of OK, of course. Ah, sorry. Like this. And here I have the special fiber. The 
write like this. Here we have the original variety over k that we started with. OK, there it is. So in the good reduction case, the most important um, property is that this is a smooth. So this is a smooth, proper and smooth. Um, in the semi-stable reduction case, so what we have is that this is a normal crossing device inside here. So that will allow us to define a, a log structure that behaves well in a certain sense. Mm. What uh, do I mean by this? I mean that by defining the appropriate uh, notion of smoothness, this will turn out to be smooth. So it's not smooth in the usual sense, but it will be in, in the log sense for saying it in a funny way. Mm. So let me, let me define uh, what it is uh, log structure. So we start with the scheme. And we define first what is a pre-log structure, which is just a sheaf of monoids on the etal side, endowed with a morphism from that uh, sheaf to the structural sheaf of X, where I consider this uh, as a sheaf of monoids with uh, multiplication. Mm. And a pre-log structure is called a log structure or logarithmic structure. Uh, if this alpha, induces an isomorphism um, like this between the, the inverse image of the invertible elements in OX to the invertible elements of OX. So the couple, uh, the scheme and the, and the log structure is called a log scheme, okay? Mm. Okay, so we have a category, category of log schemes. We define the morphism of log schemes uh, as a couple, where F is just a morphism of, sch of schemes from X to Y. And we want H to be a morphism of sheaves between the inverse image of N to M. So it's a morphism of sheaves on X um, in such a way that this diagram is commutative. So in, this is the alpha, the alpha that we had uh, before. And this would be the F minus one of, uh, maybe I shouldn't call it alpha, but it would be the alpha for, for this uh, log structure, right, in Y. So maybe beta or some other name, but, but so this is a very natural definition. Right. I mean, if we think about it, uh, this would be like the the, prop the desired property for the map H. And so the big point is that we have a category of log schemes, just as we have a category of schemes. And just as in the category of schemes, we can talk about um, smoothness. We could talk about smoothness here too. So yeah, I should comment uh, this, maybe it's a, uh, an important uh, fact. So if we have a pre-log structure on X, so not a log structure, but just a pre-log structure, uh, we can define an associated uh, log structure as a push out of this diagram. Okay, so we have uh, this one, and this is the just the inclusion. Mm. No, this is not, this is alpha. This is alpha and this is the, the inclusion. Um, yeah. Yeah, so here we will have the MA, the associated uh, log structure. So it should, uh, it should come with a morphism from MA to OX, which is defined like this using alpha. And, and yeah, one can prove that uh, that uh, that's a log structure. So the, the most uh, the most uh, common examples. So actually, the the only one or or the basic one that uh, 
that we are going to need is this one. So if uh, X is a regular scheme and D is a normal crossing divisor on X, um, we define M to be the invertible elements outside of that uh, divisor, okay, of OX. So yeah, alpha in this case is just an inclusion. Mm. So I am going to mention this, uh, this trivial log structure. So for any scheme X, I can take M, just the invertible elements of OX. And the comment is that this is, the, this is an initial object in the category of log structures on X. And uh, for any scheme, I can define the log structure of M just taking all OX. This is going to be a, a shift of monoids too. And that's a final, final object in, in the category. So, so this one is the, the important example for us. So the log structure is defined as the shift of monoids um, of taking the invertible elements outside my normal crossing divisor. So in my situation, it would be the invertible elements outside of the special fiber, okay? Mm. Yeah, so if I have two log schemes, XM and YN, a morphism from this log scheme to this log scheme is called log smooth and respectively log et al. If uh, the map of schemes from X to Y is locally of finite presentation and for any, di any diagram of log schemes of like this, um, yeah, I should, I should say that here I mean the, the same diagram. It is the same diagram as, you, as uh, when we define um, usual smoothness but uh, we are just adding uh, log structures on all, all of those uh, maps, right? So we would need uh, a T from here to here, right? So if there exists, uh, if there exists one, we say that the map is log smooth. If there exists uh, only one, we say that it's a uh, log et al. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, familiar definition, but everything with log structures. Mm. Yeah. So if we have a smooth proper variety over K with, uh, I mean, I mean a smooth uh, proper variety over K. So we, we return, we return to the original situation. So what I was saying is that in this case, the, the special fiber would be a normal crossing divisor in in the model in X and curly X, um, and so we can endow it with a log struct with a log structure, uh, and in that case this would be log smooth. So here I, I give a log structure on spec of OK given by the special point, so by the closed point. So yeah, so ju just um, like this one, like this one. Mm. And so the, the big thing is that that would be log smooth. So I, I, I will state it just as a fact. Mm. And the big thing is that in this situation, we can associate a uh, log crystalline cohomology to the special fiber. And this one behaves in a very similar way to crystalline cohomology in the, log, in the smooth proper case. So in this log smooth, uh, log smooth uh, case, Mm, we can we can work with uh, log crystalline cohomology. So if you are wondering if you know something about crystalline cohomology, if you know the definition of of the crystalline site and so on. So you might be wondering how to define uh, the the log crystalline site in order to to define the log crystalline cohomology. Well. It's going to be basically the same as the crystal inside, but everything with log structures. Just, uh, just as uh, log smoothness is the same definition as a smooth, where everything comes with log structures. So the, the crystal inside uh, to define the, I mean, the log crystal inside um, to define log crystalline cohomology is the same as crystalline, usual crystalline but everything with log structure. Just as a, as a comment, if you, are, if you were wondering um, about that. Mm, yeah. 
So now that we, we, we have uh, a cohomology theory that behaves well in this situation, we have this theorem, which is CST. CST uh, is uh, basically the, the comparison isomorphism um, as we had before, C the RAM and CBS. Uh, I mean, B, B Chris, C Chris, mm. which relates in this case, the log crystalline cohomology of the special fiber with its associated log structure. And I forgot to say, what is the log structure here? Because I said, what was the log structure on this one, but not in the special fiber. Uh, that would be the, the inverse image. So I have a log structure here. I have a map uh, there. So I can take a, an inverse image. So how do I define the inverse image? Well, I take the shift M. So here I have my log structure M. That's a shift of monoids on X. I can take the inverse image of this, and that would be a shift of monoids here. That might not be a, a log structure, but I can take the associated log structure. So that's why I defined the, the the log structure associated to a pre-log structure. So that would be the inverse image uh, log structure. So that's the one that I put here on, on the special fiber. And the same here, since I had one here, I can take the inverse image here and, uh, and yeah. So, so we have this uh, log crystalline cohomology that, as I said, it's defined in a similar way as usual crystalline. But uh, the, big, the big thing here is that we relate it to the etal cohomology via the, the period ring BST, BSM stable. And this isomorphism, which is uh, functorial, canonical, it respects uh, Galois, Frobenius, and now we have monodromy too. If you remember, uh, on BST, we have monodromy. Actually, the log crystalline cohomology comes equipped with a monodromy operator as well. Uh, and so, so, yeah, we have an extra, an extra structure on, on, this, on this theorem. And so we have this, this comparison, comparison isomorphisms. Mm -hmm. And if you remember what we did yesterday, we we took uh, the GK invariance on both sides of the of this isomorphism in both cases in in BST, I mean C Chris and C the RAM, um, and we got something like this. So that we identified the GK invariance of this as uh, some structure. So if you remember in the case of uh, see the RAM, we got only the RAM cohomology. And here in the decrease case, we had crystalline cohomology here. Now we have log crystalline cohomology. And, uh, and this is closely related to the RAM cohomology as well. Mm, yeah, because you can take uh, coefficients. Uh, uh, yeah, base change uh, of log crystalline cohomology should give you the RAM cohomology of the generic fiber of XK mm, in the, at least in the, in the log smooth uh, case. So yeah, so this is, this is just to, to make it more, more clear what I said in the, in the last part of, the, of yesterday's lecture. I, I apologize if it was a little messy yesterday. So today it's a little better written, but uh, what, what I do want to address uh, today is the good reduction problem the good reduction problem. So we were talking about uh, two different cases, the good reduction case in which we have the, the C, C crease and the semi-stable reduction case in which we have CST, the, the one that we just uh, saw here. So in the semi-stable reduction case, we can use this. In the good reduction case, uh, we have the other one, but now, I would like to address this question. So suppose X is a smooth proper with a semi-stable model, semi-stable, and we would like to get uh, criteria, and I mean PIADI criteria, to know whether X has good reduction or not. So in, in other words, uh, 
that that could be translated as a, a criterion to know whether the special fiber is smooth or not. Mm. And yeah, I also stated yesterday that there are some known uh, criteria. So for abelian varieties, uh, we have this by Coleman, Jovita, and Boyle. I think it's pronounced uh, like that. I hope my French pronunciation is not too bad, but okay. Um, so it's, it says uh, like this, if we have a semi-stable abelian variety, AK, that has a good reduction if and only if uh, its periodic tape module uh, is uh, crystalline. So I, I, I already mentioned this actually um, yesterday. Mm, I, I'm just uh, stating it as one of the criteria for, for good reduction um, that, we, that we have, let's say, very well known. Um, because, uh, well, we would eventually like to get is something like this, something similar to this uh, criterion. So then we have something for curves. This is due to Andreata, Jovita, and Kim. Um, so I, I will not uh, define exactly what are the, these representations, but I just want to say this. So if X is a semi-stable curve, we can define so certain representations for N larger or equal than one. And though that is in terms of the et al fundamental group. And the criterion is that X has good reduction if and only if those representations are crystalline, all of them. Okay. So so yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying exactly what are these, Ian. What, what I want to, to, to remark is that both, criterias, both criteria are very similar in the sense that both are in terms of the property of a certain um, periodic representation being crystalline, right? That's, that's what I want to remark here. So for both abelian varieties and curves, the criteria are similar for certain um, representations. And just as a, a, com a comment for, for this uh, criterion, um, it's enough to, to check uh, this property for n, ah, sorry, here it's smaller than four. So you can check for n equals one, two, three, and four, and that would be enough, mm, yeah. So now I would like to, to talk about the case of K3 surfaces. I mentioned it yesterday too, but I would like to give some more details on how, how this works, okay? Mm. So we start with a proper and smooth uh, K3 surfaces over K3 surface over K with a semi-stable model over OK, as usual. And we have this criterion and that uh, was proved by Rogelio a few years ago um, that says that it has good reduction if and only if the talco homology is crystalline. So as you can see, this uh, criterion is also very similar to the one of uh, abelian varieties and the one of uh, semi-stable curves. Mm. And I would like to give an outline of the proof of this just to see, I mean, I will be brief with this, mm. but I, I would like to, 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 show, to show what are the ingredients in, in the proof. So, so the thing is that it's based on a classical argument. So, so let me describe uh, what uh, classical argument uh, I'm talking about. So suppose that we have a complex manifold of dimension n plus one, and we denote by delta the complex unit disk. So we have this definition, a proper flat uh, holomorphic map from X to the complex unit disk uh, is, uh, called a semi-stable degeneration. 
if for any t different than zero, the fiber at t is a smooth complex variety and the fiber at zero um, has a smooth irreducible components intersecting transversally in such a way that phi is locally defined by this equation. So this is basically, basically having a semi-stable model, right? So we can think, excuse me, We can think of this as the complex unit, complete, complex uh, unit disk. We can think about this as the origin, and we can think about this as a generic fiber, as a t different than zero, right? So we have a generic fiber, we have a special fiber, and and this this map. It's locally like this. So you see, you see it's locally given by this polynomial equation, which uh, reminds uh, exactly the same situation that we have in, in this classical definition. So, so what I mean, what, what, what I want to stress uh, in this part is that the semi-stable reduction case um, is just the, arithmetic uh, anal analogous situation of this, right? Mm. So, so it makes sense that we would like to emulate some of the strategies used in, in this classical situation translated to, to the arithmetic uh, case, to the arithmetic situation. Mm. Yeah, so this is just a technical definition because we we are going to need it uh, to state some theorems in a moment. So the dual graph of the special fiber is a simplicial complex uh, defined as this. So for each irreducible component, uh, we put a vertex and, uh, and the simplex generated by some of them um, belongs to the complex if and only if the intersection of the respective uh, components uh, is uh, non-empty. So, so yeah, this is just uh, a technical technical definition that we are going to, to need to state uh, this big uh, theorem by Kulikov that says that a semi-stable degeneration of K3 surfaces is birational to one for which the central fiber is one of these three types. So, so we have this notion of semi-stable degeneration, but we are going to, to focus on the case of a semi-stable degeneration of K3 surfaces. So the, the fibers are K3 surfaces. So, so what this theorem is telling us is that uh, up to by rational equivalence, uh, we might assume that the, that the central fiber, the special fiber is one of these three types. So it's either a smooth K3 surfaces, it's either a union of uh, these types. So um, we have this uh, Y zero to YK plus one, which is a chain. So each, each of them intersects only the preceding one and the next one. And moreover, the intersection, those intersections are elliptic curves. The first one and the last one are rational surfaces. And the others are ruled where these uh, elliptic curves are sections of the ruling. Um, and the third type, all the components of, uh, of the central fiber are rational surfaces. And uh, the, yeah, so this intersection is a cycle of rational curves. And more importantly, this is actually the important thing in the, in the third type, that the, the dual graph that we just defined in the previous slide is a triangulation of, of the sphere, S2. Okay, so, so, so this, uh, this is a, a classical theorem, but uh, it tells me that when, if I want to study, if I want to study um, 
semi-stable degenerations of K3 surfaces. Um, up to by rational equivalence, we, we have that the central fiber is one of these three types. And so, so look at this. The first type is, uh, is a smooth. So if we want to translate this to the arithmetic case, remember, we want to get, we want to get a criterion to know whether we have good reduction or not. And we might, uh, res um, yeah, we, we might do that by, by determining if the if the special fiber is uh, smooth or not. So the special fiber in this case is the central fiber. In the classical case is the central fiber, the fiber at zero. Um, and we have here one type. So if we can get a criterion to know to know when we are in this type, because we have only three, so we don't have too many choices, um, we might uh, we might try to, to do something similar for the arithmetic case, okay? So, so yeah, in, in order to have that criterion, we are still in the classical case. I am just trying to, to describe what we are trying to do to come back to the arithmetic case, but we are still in the classical case. So, in this case, we have an action, a monodromy action on the on the cohomology of the of the genetic fiber mm, that is denoted by T. It's usually called the picard lefschetz transformation. It's just actually the action of the fundamental group of the of the um, punctured uh, disc. Mm. And yeah. So then we have a monodromy theorem that says that, uh, that uh, T minus identity is going to be nilpotent. So T is unipotent. Mm. And so that uh, allows us to define uh, this other operator, which I call here monodromy operator, uh, the logarithm of T, because this would be a finite sum. So this is well-defined. and. And this uh, operator, uh, what was T uh, asking Patrick? Uh, T is the, the map induced uh, by the action of the fundamental group of, of uh, the puncture disk, but in the cohomology, in the cohomology of the, of the... Yeah, exactly, Rogelio. Uh, T is uh, what it's usually called monodromy, but here I, I'm calling the monodromy operator this other because this is the one that behaves more like the N operator that we had uh, yesterday. Yeah. So, so yeah. So this this uh, this operator actually will be nilpotent, right? And so the theorem that we have in the classical case is that. Uh, is that the order of nilpotency of this operator uh, tells me exactly in which of these three types I am. So if we have a semi-stable degeneration of K3 surfaces, um, so the central fiber would be of type one if and only if uh, the monodromy, this N operator is, uh, is trivial on H2, uh, would be of type two, if and only if uh, the order of nilpotency is two on H2, and uh, would be of type three if and only if uh, the order of nilpotency is larger than two on H2, okay? So, so if you think about it, if you think about it, uh, this, uh, this is actually yelling to us that uh, that uh, there should be a relation with with what we saw yesterday because because we want to get uh, some crystalline well some criterion telling me about this property of having good reduction and relating it to the property of a uh, representation being crystalline 
And uh, what we saw in one of the previous lectures was that uh, the property of being crystalline for a semi-stable representation had to do with this n operator being trivial. And, and the good reduction is having the central fiber or the special fiber being smooth. And here in this classical situation, we have that that the central fiber is smooth when the when this operator is uh, is trivial, and so that is telling us that there should be well that makes us think that uh, there should be a relation, right? And uh, the answer is that it actually there is, and 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 yeah, so. So let me let me take the break uh, right now. So just just to let you know what uh, what we have to do is we want to prove we we want to prove uh, this uh, theorem, right? Um, so what we are going to do is to use the classical theorem this uh, to prove the, the arithmetic uh, version. So what we want to do is to pass from the arithmetic situation to the classical situation. So we have here this uh, theorem and then to translate back, to go back to, to the arithmetic case. So that would be, sort of the proof but what we are going to see after is that we might avoid uh, this uh, this classical classical argument and we might do everything periodically everything periodically so yeah we will do that we will do that uh, when we come back in 10 minutes okay Thank you. Let me pause the recording. Okay. So I was I was saying that uh, this uh, classification theorem um, of the special fiber of uh, semi-stable degenerations of K three surfaces. Mm, is. Uh, is there a, one of the main ingredients in the proof of the good reduction criterion. So I will say just what's the idea behind the proof. Now that we know, not with, now that we know this classical result, um, the basic idea is uh, this one, that uh, we can use the theory of the formations to, to construct a new family, and we can use an embedding of uh, the, the of k0 in the complex numbers uh, in such a way that uh, we we end up with a family of k3 surfaces over c such that the type of the central fiber coincides with the with the one we had originally and the nil potency order of n for for this family over c coincides with the one on this this is the DST of this uh, periodic representation. So here we have a monodromy operator, we have an N operator, and we have another N operator uh, like, like here, right? This one in the complex uh, situation. So the idea is that we can construct a new family now over the complex numbers and um, that its behavior uh, it's uh, similar to the one that we had originally. Mm, that the construction of that family, I mean, it's not uh, very difficult, but it's the main topic of an article by Rogelio. So, so I will not uh, too many details. Uh, I, I, I would like to only, only stay with the idea that uh, what we construct is a family over C such that the central fiber, um, the type of the central fiber coincides. So just to know that smooth, whether it's a smooth uh, or not depends on the operator N in that family, because we 
already know that for the classical situation, right? And so we can prove that the nil potency order of, of n coincides with the one here. Mm. And so, yeah, so now we are done because, because, uh, because we will have, we will have uh, smoothness in the central fiber if and only if uh, the, op the monodromy operator is uh, trivial, which means that this representation is crystal, right? So, so that would that would be the proof of uh, of the criterion for for K three surfaces. Mm, but as I said, we would like to get a proof which is uh, completely piadic. Mm, and so, so let us look at what we used here. We used uh, this uh, theorem. And to prove this theorem, we used uh, this theorem. And, and yeah, that's it. So we have Kulikov's theorem about the classification of the central fiber of a K3 surface. And we have this, uh, this classification in terms of monodrome, in terms of this N operator. So we would like to know how did we get here in the classical case. And uh, the main tool to prove that is the Clement Schmidt exact sequence. Um, that's a long exact sequence that uh, relates the topology and Hodge theory of the central fiber of a semi stable degeneration to that of a smooth fiber by means of monodromy. So, yeah, here I'm giving some details. I might uh, skip them for now. I will just state the main theorem, um, saying that, uh, look at this. So look at the cohomology groups that, that are involved in this long exact sequence. So for example, we have this HM limb, which is actually, it's actually the limit Hodge structure that Jaime mentioned at the end of his course, right? Uh, that's because we, we are working in this uh, semi-stable degeneration case, which is exactly the, the the situation that Jaime described, uh, where we we have this limit Hodge structure, mm. and so the, we have this uh, operator n acting on on that uh, limit Hodge structure. This is actually a long exact sequence of mixed Hodge structures. Um, but as a matter of fact, in order to prove the theorem that we are interested in, we don't need the the, the mixed Hodge structure completely. We only need uh, the filtrations. So, so I am stating here the, the theorem as uh, that all of these are morphism, morphisms of filtered vector spaces. But what is really behind is the mixed host structures involved. So, so these are just, uh, this is uh, homology of, uh, of the central fiber. This is uh, cohomology of, uh, of the, well, it, it might be of X, of X, or it might be also the central fiber, the genetic fiber. They are actually isomorphic as, as uh, vector spaces. And, and yeah, so this is the limit code structure. And so this is a long, a long exact sequence. Mm. So this is the, the, the theorem or, or the tool that we use to, to get, uh, the wave filtration. Mm. To prove this, to prove this. So, so what, we, what we do is just to, to study this uh, operator n in this exact sequence, okay? Mm. Yeah, so, so if we want to get uh, an arithmetic version of, of this one, of this classification of the central fiber. So we could use some arithmetic uh, version of this if we had one. Well, the good news is that we do have one. So let me describe uh, 
let me describe how, how this arithmetic version of the Clement Schmidt exact sequence work. Um, so, so just remember that uh, we are in, in the classical situation for, for semi-stable degenerations. Um, we have a variety, I mean a manifold in, in the classical case over the complex unit disk. And so we might think of this as a smooth curve, right? Because it's of dimension one. Mm, so, so we are going to consider this uh, situation. So let K be a perfect field of characteristic P, for example, a finite field actually, mm, because that's what we need. We are working with the uh, periodic fields. So we might assume that K is a finite field. Mm, C a smooth curve over K and X a smooth uh, variety of dimension N plus one. And we consider a proper flat morphism F from X to C, such that for some uh, rational point, K rational point uh, in the curve. So I'm, I am changing here the complex unit disk for C. Excuse me. There it is. So this point would be something like the origin like the origin because uh, because we are we are assuming that the fiber at that point is a normal crossing divisor inside x which is very similar to the to the case of a of a semi stable degeneration in the classical case mm. So that's, that's one of the arithmetic situation we might consider. Let me mention uh, uh, another one. So we might consider a discrete valuation ring with the residue field K mm, and a variety X over that uh, discrete valuation ring, right? If uh, proper semi-stable. Mm. Yeah, in such a way that the, the special fiber will be um, a normal crossing divisor and the generic fiber is smooth. And here we have two cases, right? Um, the equicharacteristic case and the mixed characteristic case. Mm. So the first case over a smooth curve, uh, Chiarelotto and Suzuki, they constructed a Clement Schmidt type exact sequence. So, the cohomology of uh, of x. So this this these are the classical ones, the ones involved in the, the classical Clement Schmidt. So they are replaced by this other cohomology. So so this one is uh, replaced by rigid cohomology. That uh, I will not define it here, but if you know the definition of rigid cohomology, we take uh, what is called tubular neighborhoods or tubes around varieties. And uh, and this, so if you think about X as some kind of something like this, and we think of the central fiber as something like this, right? So we have normal normal crossings here. Um, so you might think of X as some kind of tubular, like some kind of tube around this. So that, that that's why I mean this is like a like um dumb way of saying it, but but uh, but I like I, I like to think about this in this way, so to know why why the good replacement for this is rigid. Mm. So the 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 limit uh, hot structure is replaced by the log crystalline cohomology, actually. Um, I, actually, if you read the, the Yodo Kato article uh, in which uh, this uh, situation is studied, the one we had uh, before, um, they, they, they mentioned why this is some kind of analogous to the limit uh, hot structure um, in the classical situation. And so this uh, via some point carré duality, we might think as a, so, some cohomology with support and we replace it by cohomology, rigid cohomology with support on the special fiber. Mm. So the big point 
is uh, that we have the arithmetic analog analogous of of these uh, of these elements of the of the classical Clement Schmidt, and so so yeah, we might we might get a a new Clement Schmidt exact sequence. Of course, the construction is not simple, but uh, but we do have one. We do have one, so we might try to use it to get some arithmetic version of this theorem. Mm. And yeah, this is yeah, this this uh, spectral sequence is is a technical technical thing that we need uh, that we need. To get uh, some filtration and log crystalline cohomology, so so we we take a crystalline cohomology of the strata of the special fiber, and that converges to the log crystalline cohomology. So I, I will not uh, give too many details on this one. Actually, I think uh, in order to understand the main points of of this last part, uh, we don't need this. So so yeah, this is just uh, to let you know that. Uh, we have we have Clement Schmidt in the first situation. We wonder if we have Clement Schmidt in this other situation. So, so we we can use uh, we, we can start with the case of uh, a complete equicharacteristic uh, DVR. So both both the residue field and uh, and the um, fraction field are of characteristic P. So essentially we, we have a ring of this type, a ring of power series. And we have this uh, result by Neron and Popescu um, that we can write uh, a ring like this as a limit of a smooth uh, K of T algebras. Mm. And using the properness of X over, over this ring, we might find one of one of those uh, K of T algebras, which are all smooth, um, in such a way that we might define an X A proper over this, and such that the fiber, uh, I mean, this fiber product, this is the fiber product of this over over this. So essentially, what we are doing is to 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 find an algebra where we have all the coefficients for the polynomials that we need to define x over this one. Basically, that's what we are doing. Mm. And yeah, so, kind of smooth descent. I think it's more like an, uh, like an approximation. Oh yeah, to get XA, yes, yes, yes. I, I thought you were meaning to, to, to put this. This is some kind of approximation uh, argument, right? Uh, but yeah, yeah, exactly. We, we, we get something smooth here, that's, that's the point. And, and moreover, and moreover we, we have this situation. So, so this spec of A might be very big, but uh, we can choose a, a curve, a curve inside uh, here, passing through the special point, which is so. Let me. So here we have a special point. And so we send it here. So this might be very big. This is spec of A. But uh, we see the special point there, and we can take a well chosen cur curve uh, inside there. Yeah, and uh, passing transversally to the divisor defined by t equals zero, so something like like this, right? I'm sorry if my pictures are very but I'm not very good at drawing. So this is the device or T equals zero. Mm. And 
And so we can take uh, this uh, fiber product. Mm. So we have this uh, C inside here. Let me, let me let me erase this for a moment. We have the curve inside spec of A, and we take the the fiber product here. Xc here. And since the curve uh, was chosen in order to have this point uh, passing transversally here, we have inside here something like the special fiber here. Okay. Yeah, of course, uh, there are some details to be checked here. But the big point is that it's going to be a normal crossing device or inside here. So we have here we have the, the preceding situation, the, the situation over a curve, okay? And so for this situation, we do have a, a Clement-Schmidt exact sequence. That's what I'm saying here, everything with an appropriate uh, log structure defined on it. So yeah, it says here that the log structure in, this Y is the spec of A. Um, is by the device or t equals zero, and ma so the the stru log structure on x a on here is defined by the pullback the pullback of the one here so we pull back and n c defined by the point s um, n c is on the curve right so the point the point s yeah. And so the conclusion here is that we have Clement Schmidt type exact sequence for semi-stable families defined over these uh, kind of rings. Okay. And so why is this important? Because we can use log deformation theory to bring our original situation to this. So what was our original situation? So we have um, a K3 surface with a semi-stable model in such a way that uh, the special fiber is, uh, well, it's a K3 surface, but we don't know if it's a smooth or not. We want to know if it, we want to get a criterion to, to know whether it's a smooth or not. So yeah. Mm. So yeah, I'm staying again here. Uh, this, I, I need to put this, this, um, condition. Mm, it's, a, it's actually not a big condition because uh, because of this theorem that uh, in this case we have that the this uh, fiber is a is combinatorial and uh, And if uh, XK has a minimal semi-stable model, then it's a special fiber is one of those. So, so it's not a big, uh, big assumption. Actually, if P is larger than three, the, we have this theorem that uh, XK has a minimal semi-stable model. Mm. So just, just to know that if P is larger than three, we only need to study the case of a combinatorial special fiber. So that's why I put uh, this condition here. And, and I'm saying that uh, this uh, combinatorial special fiber uh, assumption is not a big assumption. Mm. <clears throat> so what is combinatorial special fiber is uh, this definition here. So let X be a proper surface over a field K. We take the algebraic closure and algebraic closure of K. We say that X is a combinatorial K3 surface. If it satisfies one of the following. So it's either smooth K3 surface over K or this uh, fiber here is uh, this a chain of smooth surfaces with the first one and the last one rational and the other elliptic rule and two double curves on each of them as ruling are ruling. So 
it's a, basically the the same definition that we had i mean not definition but uh, it's uh, basically what we had in the type 2 in kulikov's classification of the complex uh, case mm. And yeah, in the third case is also the basically the same as the, the third case of the Kulikov's classification. So we have this uh, chain of uh, smooth surfaces. Uh, all of them are rational. Um, the double curves uh, are rational and form a cycle. And the dual graph is a triangulation of S2. So very similar. Again, we are only interested in this one, right? Um, and yeah, we, we will call them combinatorial K3 surface of type one, two, and three respectively. So, so I'm going to define uh, this special, special log structure on spec of K, um, putting N to the M here, uh, where M is uh, the number of connected components of the singular locus. So this is, uh, this is technical because it's to have a log smooth map. It's to have a log smooth map. And in that case, uh, we denote it in this way and call it a simple normal crossing log variety or SNCL variety. So yeah, that's that's what we have here, SNCL K3 surface. So this, these are the results that uh, that I was stating a moment ago. I will not uh, repeat them. This is, these are just to know that uh, that uh, our assumption of having a combinatorial special fiber is not a big. Really what we need is this uh, theorem of Nakajima that says like this. So if we have an algebraically closed field of characteristic P, um, we take a projective SNCL K3 surface, then there exists a log smooth deformation over this uh, ring where the log structure is given by this, this number M. Uh, and M. Mm, and a corollary of this, that's already the, cor the corollary is the one that we need. So there exists a projective semi-stable family over this ring such that it's a special fiber is X. So let me see if, no, I don't have the, the diagram. So basically what we did was to put our special fiber, so recall that we have the situation in which we want to know whether the special fiber is smooth or not. So what we did, uh, thanks to Nakajima's uh, result, is that we can put our, our special fiber, I will denote it by XS, inside a family of this type. I will put K here. So we want to know whether this is a smooth or not, but this is a special fiber in a family of this type. Okay. And here in this situation, we do have a Clement-Schmidt exact sequence. So it looks like all the ingredients from the classical arg argumentation uh, are here, right? In the classical, let me, let me just put the other diagram. In the classical, we have here X zero. We have here the origin. We have here the complex unit disk. We have here X. Like that. So in, in the complex case, we had this situation. In this situation, we had Clement Schmidt exact sequence. We can use Clement Schmidt exact sequence to get whether this uh, is smooth or not. Here we have Clement Schmidt, and we want to know whether this is smooth or not. So, so it looks uh, very similar. Um, Felix is asking, he says, when you assume P larger than three, is it removing non-trivial automorphisms of your problem, which could be why you make this assumption and have a nicer combinatorial description? Um, 
I'm not sure if, if uh, yeah, just what happens is that uh, when P is larger than three, we have this, uh, we have this, we have the minimal semi-stable model. So, so then it's a special fiber is automatically essential. And since it, it's essential, then this is a combinatorial K3 surface. So, so the P larger than three helps us to, to, to have a combinatorial, the, the combinatorial hypothesis. Um, what happens when P is equal three, I'm not sure. I, thi I think, uh, yeah, it's possible. Um, Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not really sure what, uh, what what happens with when p is equal to two or three, um, but we are safe. We are safe if we assume uh, p larger than three. Uh, actually, actually, I think it's uh, it's worth thinking um, what happens in in the case uh, p equals to p equals uh, two or three. Yeah, that that's a good question. Actually, I, I will I will. I mean, I, I I've. I've tried to think about it, but uh, haven't uh, arrived to something very, very important. Um, yeah, so Pedro says that uh, Petri surface on the projective plane are given by homogeneous equation of degree four. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. The prime two can behave really bad. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm, yeah, so where I was? Oh yeah, so I was saying that uh, that we have a very, very similar situation here. Mm, so so yeah, actually what we do, what we, what we do now is to, this is a, a technical result. We, we can get, um, um, a theorem that tells me when the operator is zero and when the operator square um, is zero on uh, log crystalline cohomology. Remember that uh, the, the Clement Schmidt exact sequence that we have, the N operator is acting on, on the log crystalline cohomology, just as in the classical case, acts on, on uh, the limit uh, Hodge structure. Mm. Yeah, so we have this technical result. Mm. And this is going to help help us to get uh, exactly the, the same result as in the classical case. So the special fiber is of type one. Remember that we are in the combinatorial uh, case. Uh, it's of type one, if and only if uh, the monodrome is trivial on H2 log Chris. Mm, it's of type two, if and only if uh, the, the operator is of uh, degree two, nil potency degree two. And it's of type three, if and only if it's of, uh, of uh, nil potency order larger than two. It's actually three. Mm. And, so, and so basically we are done, right? Because the monodromy here, I mean, I, I have just proved, well, up to a lot of details, but we have just proved that the variety, the original variety that we started with uh, has good reduction, if and only if the monodromy on the log crystalline cohomology is trivial. But, 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 Yeah, I, I forgot to add here the relationship here. I, I mentioned it, but I didn't, uh, I didn't um, state it. So this is related to the, the RAM cohomology of the, of the genetic fiber. So we would get uh, a criterion in terms of the, the RAM cohomology.
on the DRAM cohomology. Um, and, and we would get a, a, a good reduction criterion in terms of the DRAM cohomology. And then using the comparison isomorphism, uh, B the RAM, I mean C the RAM, we would recover the other criterion in terms of the etal, etal cohomology. So everything is related here, the monodromy, the monodromy operator on, on the log crystalline cohomology, on DST of the etal cohomology, and uh, the fact of uh, the, the special fiber being smooth or not. So, so we have the good reduction criterion obtained in just in purely piadic method. So this is what I find that it's really interesting in this in this uh, part that uh, all the methods that we used are not uh, in terms of uh, of uh, the piadic Galois representations, but the result that we get can be stated in terms of, of the of the piadic Galois representation. So so it's funny because we are proving a piadic Hodge theory result without using anything anything basically of, of piadic Hodge theory. We are using this this approximation uh, method. But uh, yeah that works for K3 surfaces. That's the point. That's the point. So so now we wonder this question, can we get similar criteria for other types of varieties or other kinds of surfaces, for example? And I will, I will leave another question. Can we get a clement schmidt type exact sequence in the mixed characteristic case? If you remember, when I stated the, the possible arithmetic situations that we can have, so to to have a Clement Schmidt exact sequence, we have over a curve. This is okay. This is Kerloto Suzuki. We have uh, the a discrete valuation ring in which uh, we have two subcases, and this one is okay. Is the one that we proved, and we we it's just um, using the the previous case. But this one, I'm not so sure. And so I, I will leave that as a as an open question, and uh, and yeah. So both of them, I think, uh, they are interesting problems to to attack, and um, yeah. So I, I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for for being in this course. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have some remarks or corrections, please. If not, uh, thank you.